Camilla Escalante uh, is a correspondent joining us from Sao Paulo. And we also have Arnold August, author and journalist, who joins us from Montreal for a breakdown. Okay, Camilla, first over to you. So tell us about this deal, which in some ways is very historic when you consider the consequences and the ramifications of it. Absolutely. Well, Brazil signed more than 20 cooperation agreements this week at a business uh, mission in Beijing that was organized by Brazil's state-owned company, uh, Apex Brazil, uh, which promotes exports and investments. There was a business seminar uh, that gathered authorities and businessmen from the two countries. And it was main, made known yesterday that trade between China and Brazil will now be conducted through local currencies directly between the Chinese yuan and the Brazilian real. And that excludes, of course, the U.S. dollar as a method of payment. And if this, this all took place um, with numerous Brazilian officials there in uh, China. The week in which Lula was supposed to, President Lula was supposed to travel over to Shanghai and Brazil and uh, and Beijing himself, but of course, due to illness, that trip was postponed. Nevertheless, uh, a, a delegation of officials were already there, taking part in the preparations for Lula's trip, and so they went they went ahead and um, are conducting some of these meetings um, as they would have had the president been there. Um, but we also heard that Lula da Silva will be traveling now to uh, Beijing. He'll be holding those meetings, including with President Xi Jinping, now rescheduled for April 11th to the 14th. He's now recovered from his uh, pneumonia. Um, and so there are about 20 bilateral uh, trade agreements that are on the table. And China has a lot of interest in Brazil. There's a lot, of, uh, there's a lot that Brazil can offer China. But one of the things is this uh, massive agricultural sector. There's um, a lot of different uh, produce um, and products that could get to China if uh, they are to figure out a way between the two countries to develop some of the necessary infrastructure for Brazil to be able to increase its exports and get those products um, over to Brazil. That also includes things like Brazilian beef and of course Brazilian beef. And of course, this all takes place the same week that former president of Brazil. Dilma Rousseff has taken office as the president of the New Development Bank, the BRICS Bank. And it also takes place as uh, another country of the region, Honduras, is establishing officially diplomatic relations with China and has broken ties with Taiwan. So a lot is taking place right now with regards to this region getting much closer economically and otherwise to Beijing. Indeed, that's uh, obviously what this spells. Arnold August, I'm sure you'll agree with that, but it hasn't obviously been a great week uh, or maybe even a great year uh, for the, uh, the, do the dollar. I mean, the dollar is taking a beating. Uh, the news out there is quite overwhelming in a sense, uh, and uh, now you have this announcement that has been made in terms of the agreement between uh, Russia, I'm sorry, between uh, Brazil and China. Now, t tell us what this means. This, I think, if I'm correct to say this, your opinion matters, it's all under this context of the shift to the new global world order, which has been uh, gathering ra uh, rather a lot of steam recently. Is that correct? Yes, I, th I think uh, it's correct, and it definitely is historic. We have to recall that the dollar system, the U.S. dollar system, was imposed by the United States and the West at Bretton, Hood, Bretton Woods Conference in New Hampshire in 1944. But most historians will tell you every currency hegemonic currency at one point comes to an end. And I think we're seeing this process now with the U.S. losing its hegemony, uh, with the uh, using the U.S. dollar as a weapon. It definitely is coming to an end. We could even say it has coming to an end. As you say, it's been a very, very important year. I think one of the, like, in th this current uh, most recent decision between Brazil and China comes on the heels of a memo of understanding signed in February 2023, just after Lula came to power with the uh, Brazilian banks and the uh, People's Bank of China. I think I just like to emphasize People's Bank of China. Some in the West may scoff, oh, People's Bank of China. How can a bank be a people's bank? Well, in the case of China, yes the currency system, the banks, et cetera. Uh, irrespective of who are, 
are, who are involved in them individually as bankers or whatever, the banking system and the People's Bank of China is used as part of the state apparatus for the well-being of the Chinese people and the well-being of other peoples of the world that allows this People's Bank of China to, uh, to sign this historic agreement uh, with, uh, with Brazil. Now, I would just like to emphasize once again to build on, on what you know, we are saying is very historic. Brazil and China, as you know, are the most important or the most important countries in BRICS. Now, while this is going on bilaterally, Brazil and China, you have a whole slew of other countries who have already signed on to BRICS or have made a formal application to join BRICS. You know, if we just go to, for example, Algeria, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Nicaragua, Nigeria, Senegal, uh, Thailand, United Arab Airmen, uh, Emirates, and of course, Iran and others. This is a colossal uh, a new block uh, worldwide based in the main on the, uh, on the global south and has as its main objective to end U.S. hegemony in general over the economies of other countries and also specifically the question of currencies. I mean, one of the main reasons this will help this current uh, um, new deal between uh, China and, and Brazil will help because it will cut down the costs at a time when inflation is rampant and people feel, countries and people feel more secure with any currency that is not based on the U.S. And I think we have to, once again, without exaggeration, point out the important role to the People's Republic of China in carrying out this new, new system. And just before this announcement, we also had the historic, in my view, uh, tectonic change in geopolitical politics when China brokered the uh, new uh, deal between uh, Iran and, and Saudi Arabia. This is major. And so all of these things put together, as you say, are forcing us to look to to the in a, to the world in the world and another optic, entirely different uh, game set. Sure, and it's great news for Brazil to have Dilma Rousseff sitting as the chief of the new BRICS Bank. Okay, that's great. We're going to unfortunately have to leave it there. Timothy Escalante, thank you for your uh, information there from Sao Paulo, a correspondent there. Arnold August, it's a pleasure, author and journalist from Montreal. And with that, we come to an end for this edition of the News Review and the News. Thanks for tuning in.